Hello everyone, welcome to Life Boost here. My name is Ryan and I would like to thank you all for listening to my content. Please follow and subscribe. Today I'm speaking with Candice Backfriesen and she is a certified money coach and top performing realtor, real estate investor and business coach from Winnipeg, Manitoba. She specializes in helping people take control of their future through marketing, sales and wealth creation. She is also a podcast host and a creator of the show called Investor Smarts which is available on Stitcher, iTunes, and YouTube. Last but not least, she is an author of a book called From No Worth to Self Worth. This book is available on waterstones.com, and all details will be in the description below. Thank you, Candice, for joining my show. How are you doing today? Oh, everything's great. Looking forward to talking to you, so thanks for having me. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be speaking with you about finance and talking about the issues among that, right? And really trying to dig deep into trying to understand what we can do to be better with money. And I do find that nowadays there's not a lot of education available to speak about this topic. And it's a pleasure to have you introduce this to people. So my question to you to start off with is, is what got you into this? What made you so passionate into helping people with finances? Um, I think it really just started uh, as as a kid. I have an entrepreneurial background. So my parents had businesses, my grandparents. And so at one, one point, I just thought, okay, how am I going to do this? Like I'm 12 or whatever I was and just thought, how am I going to pay for bills? And I see success around me, but how am I going to do this and, and keep up with what everyone else is doing in my family? So, yes, I was fortunate to have a great background, you know, good childhood, parents, um, very involved and uh, and things were good. So um, I had an aunt who was an accountant. She was kind of somebody I looked up to and I thought, I'm not going to get married or have kids. I'm just going to be a career woman and be like her, go to school. Um, I got married at 19 and I've got four kids. So never say never in life. Um, but yeah, ended up becoming a real estate agent after getting my degree. Um, but, you know, dealing with people day to day, you know, you, you finish the transaction and then it seemed to just come up over and over where people were like, you know, Candice, you seem to know about money. Like, could I ask you a few questions? And I think so often in life, um, if you pay attention to what people are saying about you or talking about, um, you, you see opportunity, right? And so I just saw that, you know, through real estate transactions, you can, you can really make an impact in people's lives. But looking at legacy and to be able to help people with their finances, help them teach their kids, all those great things was just really important. So, um, so I'm still a realtor, but I also do some real estate um, investing coaching as well as personal finance coaching. Very incredible, right? Where you actually get the opportunity to sit down with individuals and really dig deep into their finances and find the core value issues that they need to improve on, right? Do you find within your clients in particular, what do you find that they are suffering in when they are trying to buy a home? Um, when people are buying, usually by the time they get to me, they've already kind of figured out their finances. Uh, so they already have the down payment. But sometimes it's uh, people who, you know, you, you do start and then you realize, oh, you, you haven't quite been to the bank or, or there's something that's holding people back. It could be um, things like credit. So maybe they've never established credit or uh, they, they did dumb things when they were a kid. Right. And now they've got bad credit issues. They have to work past. Um, but time and time again, it's trying to save up on the side to get a house, right? That's re it's really difficult. Um, so if you're renting a place and you have a car payment, it's really hard to now find that extra money to set aside for a down payment. Exactly. And trying to put the money down towards a down payment, houses nowadays are going for at least a million dollars in in a lot of places throughout Canada and even houses that are half a million dollars, right? Where you have to actually save upwards to $30,000 to buy a home, 30 to 40 grand, just to, just to buy a, a home within that range, be prepared to buy a home like this. How can we save this amount of money and what ways or strategies would you recommend for us to save this type of money? So then when, when it's time to buy our future home or our home, what can we do to be prepared for that? 
I think that's why a lot of people more and more are waiting to get married or waiting to buy their first place. Uh, part of it is, or leaving their parents, right? Kids are staying at home longer and longer, and that's part of it. Um, you know, I think it used to be that people would buy a house, a fixer-upper house, they'd work on it, build that equity, and then buy the next house and slowly move up, right? But nowadays, too, kids kind of want to move into a really nice house. They don't want to have that fixer-upper in between either, right? So it's just um, expectations or uh, what people want that will determine what you end up doing, right? So oftentimes it takes putting in extra, well, it takes sacrifice really to get anything that you want. So in my life, there's been many times and, and I still work really long hours, right? And and that's not for everybody, but you know, you, you get where you get usually because of sacrifice, you know, you can't have it all um, as much as sometimes people say, you know, or, or the media seems to show in people's lives, social media, that's everyone seems to have it all, but they don't, right? Uh, that's not real, real life. And so, you know, you could look at a lot of different ways to get to your goals, but ultimately, what, what sacrifice are you going to make? If you really want it bad enough, you can do it. So that might be moving back home, you know, for a year or two and sacrificing, like not everyone wants to do that. It's not easy. But what, what do you want out of life? Maybe it's working a couple jobs for, again, for a period of time, right? Um, maybe it's downsizing to one car and not having that, that extra car payment and start putting that money aside. Um, house hacking, where you rent out part of your house to somebody else, uh, rent out a room. So there's many ways to do it and there's many ways to get ahead. Um, but it, yeah, it takes sacrifice. Awesome. And is there any courses or anything that people can do online to really enhance their abilities within finance? Yeah, I think that, you know, there's so many different resources out there and it depends what people want, right? So if you're just starting from square one, maybe you want to start buying some books, you know, you can go just type in personal finance or money books and there's lots of stuff out there and start reading and seeing what resonates with you. Um, with social media, there's so many different, you know, influencers or people who are offering free information all day long. Um, so you can learn a lot for free. Uh, podcasts like this, like other fi personal finance podcasts out there. So there, there's no shortage really of information out there these days. You know, you can type in almost anything and learn, um, but it's implementing that's the tough thing. And also trying to break the stigma of not having money, right? And and trying to understand that everybody starts somewhere, right? To really think that money is their worth and in reality, really their worth. And, and the number one thing that has been going on lately is people aren't really happy. Maybe they're stressed out because of the fact that when they look at their paycheck, they value that as who they are. And yeah. we kind of need to break that stigma and understand that everybody's in the same financial position, really improve the mental uh, part of this, where we can actually focus on telling people that, you know, the money in your bank account is not the value of who you are. Yeah, I think it starts with having money conversations, you know, so again, people talk like look for podcasts or they pick up books because, you know, you don't talk, you don't have people over for dinner and say, hey, what are you investing in? Like it, it's taboo for a lot of people, right? I do have friends where we'll talk about business stuff, but it's not, it's not for everybody, right? Um, so it's not something that just comes up. Again, if you're struggling as a parent, you don't necessarily want to talk about your pain points with your kids. Um, so then sometimes money doesn't, isn't talked about or, you know, if, if a kid brings up something about business and it's like, oh, that's not, I don't want to talk about it. And you shut kids down, then that's what they learn, right? That money's a taboo subject. So it starts with having the conversations and being vulnerable, really, to say, I want to do money better. I want to have more. I want to figure this stuff out. That's the starting point. Yeah. And just having that mental mindset of just understanding that, you know, it is okay to be in this position. It is okay to do this and you need to make financial sacrifices in order to get to the top. You have to, in order to really grow nowadays within housing, 
or if you want a big investment for yourself, you're going to have to dig deep down and say, hey, what do I have to give up here, right? There's people that are, you know, they have everything they need and they're still going paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. And what are some alternative methods that they could do to improve on their wealth by creating income? Um, so income wise, again, usually it's either figuring out another way to uh, uh, make more money in terms of like having a side hustle. So people get into having a small business on the side. Um, it could be finding a different job that you're doing on the side. And the other thing is just asking for a raise or trying to move up within the organization. So I think, again, one of the big things that we really have to recognize in life is we've become complacent, right? Um, so this is good enough. So I, at some point, I just kind of stop striving often in different parts of life, right? So um, I eat well enough, I exercise enough, you know, but to, to get to the highest level in anything, you have to keep pushing, and pushing yourself. And so it becomes, but why would I want that? So why do I want to have great finances? So there's got to be that why, and there's got to be that long-term perspective because um, having a strong financial future is really running a marathon. You know, we can't just save one day and then that's good enough. You know, I can't go to the gym one day and have perfect abs, right? It's that consistent everyday good habits um, and making that a focus every day. So in order to run those marathons, that's not easy, right? It's continual training. It's pushing yourself to try and get better time all the time, right? And, and improve on your on your um, speed and things like that. And finances is no different. So why is it important enough to you to put in that time consistently to make that a focus? What's the driving factor? And that's different things for different people, right? It could be, I want to leave a lot of money to my kids. That's really important. It could be, I don't want to have to eat craft dinner in the dark in my retirement. I want to feel like I, I've got the retirement piece figured out. Um, it could be I want to retire early and just travel. Um, but you got to have a why. Otherwise, it's really hard to stick to anything in life. You're definitely spot on about, you know, you have to complete objectives and milestones for yourself on a daily basis. And if you don't do those things, you're going to crash over time because if you're not organized about your finances and if you're not really serious about the, the long-term goals, it can really affect you. If couples uh, or people that are in marriages, people that are in very high serious relationships, they say that finances is one of the main reasons why people get a divorce and separate. And I really want to try to break this issue for couples. So what is some techniques that you would recommend for couples to do in a safe environment about talking about finances? Because you said that, you know, you have to really uh, break the taboo of the conversations about finances, right? And it's the right people at the right time. So what would you suggest to people that are having a struggle within their relationship because of money and because of finances of pursuing mm -hmm. their dreams? Yeah. So it's usually not the money as crazy as that sounds. So the problem is the money, but it's not the money because money is how we deal with different things that come up in life. So let's say my husband and I are struggling over an issue or um, my daughter actually has a disability. So maybe I'm struggling with that and dealing with, you know, what some kind of problem with her or whatever it is, but what's the result. I try to make myself feel better by something. And maybe I go and blow a whole bunch of money on clothes. Maybe I go to a spa, I go have a spa day. Right. So I'm, I'm spending money to try and deal with issues. And so oftentimes we're not recognizing really what the issue is but we're looking at the money part. So if I go in, uh, in that example, I go blow a whole bunch of money, um, then t I get home and I'm, I'm looking at all this clothes, I feel bad, I'm stressed out, I'm mad at myself, why did I do this? Now I've got all this debt I have to worry about. It's like this vicious cycle that just grows like a snowball almost, right? And um, so it can, it can be hard sometimes to unravel that. Um, and instead of dealing with the problem at hand, we you know, try and make ourselves feel better and cope with it in different ways, right? So sometimes people will cope by um, eating, right? So if I'm stressed out, I'll go eat a whole pie or something. Some people will go spend a whole bunch of money, right? 
But it's not really about the pie or the money. It's about the problem that we need to deal with, getting to the root cause of the issue. Um, so again, it's much easier for my husband and I to go spend more money and, and to not really deal with sitting down and creating a plan and who's going to sacrifice, how are we going to do this together? Um, it's, it's so often in, in relationships that you live separate lives, but you're living together, right? So coming together and having that common goal, being able to trust each other around money um, is, is really, really important, but it's hard to start. And so sometimes that's where hiring a financial coach or somebody to kind of come in and facilitate that um, is so much easier than, you know, this is what I think, this is what you think, and you're kind of at the stalemate, right? Yeah, you have someone in the middle to kind of identi identify, assess, and kind of act upon really what they need to do, right? And really observing from a non-biased point of view, right? Because money can affect relationships and friendships. And, and if you have someone in the middle ground, you're able to successfully able to create a plan because it's on. And I do find that, you know, we do need to find more ways on how to make this acceptable because it, it, ha it has been an overcoming issue uh, because of the pandemic, because of everything that's been going on. People are more worried about what's in their pockets because things like a pandemic can happen. People right. start losing money very quickly because of emergencies that are happening, right? So mm -hmm. what is a good way or a strategy that you would recommend to somebody that wants to save money for a house and why is buying a house so important why is it important to own property in the first place right um over time historically it's been a good investment right the the values have gone up so is that a good investment in every market no right real estate is very specific to certain markets um you can't make broad sweeping statements that will apply to every single house, obviously, right? You'll have bad neighborhoods, good neighborhoods, um, different types of real estate investments that are out there. Um, but that's why oftentimes it's a good investment. And if you're going to spend the money in rent anyway, why not put it towards owning a home and, and building that equity within a home, right? Uh, nowadays, a lot of people say, well, but I don't want to be tied down. Um, and it's an interesting concept because, you know, ultimately you're still living somewhere, right? You have to still live somewhere. So you are not tied down at some point and you can always sell the house too, right? It's not that you have to stay in this house for 20 years, but the mindset around owning a home is different. But when we look back to our parents, our grandparents, that was a huge part of their overall net worth was selling the family home and then living on that in retirement. Um, and with things like pensions being like, again, some industries and if you work for the government and different things, there, there's still good pensions out there, but less and less. Right. And people also don't stay in a company for 20 or 30 year, years anymore either. Right. So we have um, we can depend less on company pensions, CPP and the government. Who knows? We're taking on massive debt every day. There's more and more debt in this country. So. Ultimately, you got to take care of yourself. We can't rely on other people. So, yeah. So that's why I think real estate is still a very good investment. No, and it's good to know. It's uh, like people say buying a house is great, but it's always good to explain the why. It's always good to explain the explanations behind it because we're so easy to say, oh, yeah, getting a house is great, but why? You know, now it's good to understand that. It's going to invest for your future, and if anything, you're going to build equity towards another home, or you could even sell that home for your retirement and build a future upon that, right? And it's just the understanding of accepting the fact that, yes, you are going to be in debt from buying a home, but it's a matter of making it clean debt, meaning that something that you will be living in for the next 25 years and something that will be a clean future for you, right? Yeah, um, it's an yeah. And it's an asset that appreciates, right? Like we have, it's so easy for people to go buy a car that will end up being worth nothing, but you just spent $80,000 plus interest on this car. Um, and when someone buys a car, everyone celebrates like, oh, nice car, way to go, congratulations. Oh, they got a new car, I better get a new car. And it's all this competition. But 
in the end, that's worth nothing, right? So if we're looking at our overall net worth, then that's another thing we need to do more and more and keep that going frequently, right? So check your net worth, see how it's going every six months, let's say. Um, but when you have an asset that's appreciating, you've got worth, right? You can sell it, you've got money at the end. So whether it's a savings account or buying a house or whatever that looks like, you know, it's going to take, um, it's much easier to go spend money on something and have fun and your buddies call and they want to go out for the, you know, for drinks and stuff. It's really hard to say no and have those boundaries. Um, but yeah, if you've got goals, um, that's how you start seeing people get ahead. Very Keep beautiful. Going. And you're, you're, I, I believe you're hitting it spot on, right? Where, you know, we got to learn how to take that step back for ourselves and say, hey, I can't do this right now, but I can in the future and I will be able to do it in the future. But this is the steps and goals that I need to take. And it's about discipline, persistence and and really trying to keep the integrity of yourself to really maintain these goals. And, um, and over time, like you said, it's about benefiting for yourself. Make sure that your emotional needs are met, making sure that your physical needs are met and really trying to make that time for yourself. Today, we're stressed about our jobs, we're stressed about what's going on at home, but if you try to continuously work on your relationship, you continuously try to work hard on yourself and love who you are, it comes back in and then you can start loving money again because you're not affected personally. My thing is, is that what can we do for the future for people that are younger? the younger generations, what can we do to help educate them about money? Yes, they're going to be educating them within the school system now, which is a huge big thing. They are starting to implement programs. They're starting to implement courses. Thank goodness, because I didn't have that when I went to school. However, what can kids do outside or what can parents do to educate their children about money in a safe environment where it doesn't cause pressure on the child, but it's yeah. enough to say, Hey, this is important. And this is why it's important. I think first it's going to start with not having it a taboo subject. This is also something that you can't bring up when they're 17 and they're just about to leave the house. Um, I started talking about money with my kids at like three or four years old. It's not too early and you're not going to talk about the, the money itself, right? But it's the values again. So, hey, do you want to help me with the dishwasher? They're eager. They are going to do the dishwasher and you say, great, way to go. So it's teaching that you do and you get rewarded, right? So setting those really good um, teaching. It's just good teaching moments as you go. Um, an example, another one would be, you know, my kids were, let's say, seven and they're like, oh, we want another Lego set or whatever it was. And I said, okay, like we can continue to buy more and more Lego sets. But what about, you know, it was around Christmas. And I was like, what about if we give some money or some food to the food bank? Like what's more important, another Lego set or giving people some food? Well, kids know, right? And they're like, well, yeah, somebody needs food. We need to give them food, right? So it's not always about the money, but again, it's those values and those teaching moments along the way. And the other thing that I, I really sort of stress to parents and what I've done in my own life with my kids is that um, sometimes kids just learn better from others. So I've gone to real estate investing meetings that I would go to anyway. I'm like, do you guys mind if I bring my son who's 12? And they're like, oh, of course not. So including kids because they, they'll learn from other people, but then they can bounce the questions off you. So I know a guy, he started his computer consulting business when he was 12. And it was really cool, right? I was a couple of years older than him. And instead of me telling that story to my son, I said, hey, computer guy, could you explain how you started this business that you're doing now? And he told my son the story and it was way more impactful, right? So getting stuff in front of kids, learning with them, but also, again, yeah, having, having them exposed to different things. Um, you know, it's just like sports, you know, you, you put them in a few different things, you know, maybe they play hockey and they play soccer and they play baseball and you don't put them in one thing and that's it. You let them experience different things, right? So let them try having a lemonade stand, see what they think about it, just expose them to lots of different things. And those are just so many different teaching moments every day.
Very good advice. Like that's, that's incredible. Right. And it's good to know that we need to educate people the difference between a need and a want. And the earlier that you do that, it's going to be easier for the child to comprehend that information and to really yeah. understand the importance of money, right? That it's not just given to you, but you have to work hard for it in order to make it feel like a reward or to make it feel like something, right? A lot of people are now focused more on the wants than what they actually need. And that was right. something that I suffered with, you know, when, when I got out of the house at 17, 18, I'm excited. I want to buy a car. I want to get this. I want to get that. But then I start forgetting that, you know, now I'm financially strapped because right. I just was so happy with buying all these things. But however, yeah. I needed to take that step back and realize saying, Hey, you know, maybe I'm having too much wants and I really need to focus on what I actually need to my own financial freedom and so much money. And then they get financially locked into their situation for so many years. And it's just for mentally not trying to accept the fact that there is a difference between a need and a want and that mm -hmm. you do need to be educated within it. So beautiful to see techniques and strategies for children and for teenagers to really understand saying, Hey, you know, money is not something that's just given to you. You got to earn. And this is something that you can get, but you have to put in the time in and make it a healthy environment for them to actually learn and understand, which that's awesome, right? Because I don't know, for me, like, I never really had these talks, you know, and this is something that I think would be very beneficial towards a lot of individuals. And it's great to hear your perspectives and your topics in regards yeah. to this. And you're really about the primary issues about what's going on in our society saying hey you know you need to buckle down and you need to actually do this like as much as you want to go do your spa days as much as you want to go and live your own life yes you can but with moderation reach those proper goals for yourself always reach for that moderation first which is a very good tip for myself it's a good tip for everybody right and you know, I'm not perfect in any way. And, and by even just hearing you and, and talking to you about these core value issues, it's, it's really educated me a lot. And I thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with me about this because it is a huge issue. And I think, I guess one more thing, just to kind of, sorry to interrupt, but one thing that we really have to kind of talk about too is the instant gratification and how easy it is. So again, my, my grandparents, if they wanted to buy something, they couldn't just go on to Amazon and quickly buy things, right? So you, you thought about it more, then you got in the car, and then you drove to a store, and then maybe you bought it, maybe you were like, nah, forget it, right? So we have to recognize that the instant gratification and the ability to almost buy things from Amazon in your sleep really makes that difficult as well, right? So you have to have these boundaries and these sort of decision making factors in your life where like an example would be, okay, I really want to buy this book and it's easy for me to just quickly buy it. Um, and again, maybe I'm in bed and I'm almost asleep and I hit purchase, right? And I'm buying a book in my sleep in the morning. I'm like, did I just do that? But, you know, maybe I have a rule in my life where I say, okay, if I want to buy a book, I have to wait one week. And then if I still want it, I'll buy the book, right? Um, so having those boundaries and those decision-making factors of how you, how you decide to purchase things or what you're going to decide um, is super, super crucial because it's so easy to spend money. Exactly. And when you're on your phone and you're just scrolling through on Instagram, you're scrolling through all these social media apps and there's opportunities to buy anything that you absolutely want, you need to click on it and say, hey, I want to buy this now. Cause it's now it's pretty it looks nice it's beautiful it's dopamine hit it's giving me everything and we just need to understand that you know if you take too much of those dopamine hits it's not healthy for you and you know hey i just need to take a step back and realize saying whoa this is too much for me you know and it's beautiful to see you hit this spot on and realize you know take the pauses really assess what you're buying and think twice before you do it yes you can buy what you want to do but within moderation and within understanding your own finances. And if you don't understand your own finances, go out and speak to someone or even educate yourself within your own finances, whether going on YouTube, going through podcasting, or even just speaking with a coach like yourself that can offer techniques and ways to be financially successful. And I would like to thank you so much for having the opportunity to talk to me about this because this has been a big issue for people that are in 
the emergency services. This has been an issue for people, not even just within the emergency services, but everywhere across Canada and, and even in, throughout the world. Yeah. And it's good that, you know, just by us even talking about it and educating people about this topic, it should hopefully try to change people's perspectives about it. And I would like to thank you so much for coming on here and really making that impact. It really does. And I thank you for coming on to my show. I thank you for everything that you have to offer because it's very beautiful. And the background story of how your success came was from your family roots and how you developed that. And now you've gained what you love doing is helping people get a home and helping people feel secured in their life. And by you providing these techniques, you're going to help change lives. You're going to help save lives. And it's, it, I know it's a weird perspective to see, but owning a house nowadays is a big deal. And you're one of those people that helps people make that happen. Just even taking the time to really explain financial ways to be successful for our future children, for yourself, and and to help you understand that money isn't just about an object, right? And you have to understand to regulate your emotions and get the proper help that you need before making big financial decisions for yourself. This is something that I'm trying to work on for myself because I'm also not perfect when it comes to finances. So this is a great talk for myself also to educate me about this. Yeah. And you know, if you've got big dreams, you know, you'd like to help a, a charity or you want to volunteer or whatever that is. So many of these big items that, that people really want to accomplish in life, it's much easier if you're financially secure, right? If you're struggling day to day, then you're so stressed out and focused on that, that it's really hard to think outside of just the day to day, right? Um, so again, I think that, you know, the more people that we get financially secure and feeling confident about money, you affect communities, you, you just see that ripple effect, right? So uh, really important if it's not from a financial coach, you know, but bring those things into groups of friends, bring it into the community, you know, and uh, encourage people at your workplace to also, you know, invest in their financial future too. Definitely solid advice coming from Miss Candice back reason. Thank you so much and have a great day. Mm -hmm.